One, two, okay, let's go. So wave interference, when you're studying waves, you are gonna be coming up on this particular topic where you have two waves or possibly more, as you can see there on the screen, that start to interact between each other. And when this happens, we wanna be able to know what is actually happening in this interaction and how do we take care of these two waves or possibly more waves so that we can recreate a brand new wave. So as you can see here in this simulation, so I'll post, I guess, the link to the Desmos kind of a simulation that I've made for this. This is basically just two waves crossing each other, so going back and forth. And you can see that there's a superposition happening, which is the addition of the amplitudes of the waves, okay? and then they're changing up, and then they're just passing by each other. So let's dive into these particular topics and see how exactly you know this is working. So when you have wave interference, and I mentioned the word superposition, so what exactly are they? Well, interference just simply means that if you take two waves or more, and they start to interact between each other. Now, of course, this is very common because if you take in, you know, if it's a noisy street, okay, if you're going in for example, walk, if you're gonna be going into a concert, okay, if you're gonna be going to a construction site, you will notice that in particular with regards to sound, there's going to be a lot of sounds coming out at you. Now remember, sound is just a wave, right? It's a longitudinal wave. You can put up a link up above there, okay, to refresh yourself on sound. But when you have multiple waves crossing paths, they are going to interact. And sometimes our ears might not pick up anything, which is meaningful. And we, we may want to be able to filter some of these out. Now, these interferences are not just with regards to sound, you know, they happen all over. You can have regular waves with water. So here's another simulation that I have for you. This one, you can go in, this is on PHET, on the Colorado kind of site, which is an amazing site with regards to various wave aspects. So as you can see here, so you have kind of like two taps and I just wanna be able to show you that you can have interactions. I'm gonna click on one of those taps, which is gonna drop a water very slowly, and it's going to start to create waves and patterns for us. So as you can see there, you know, so those ripples, this is just from the top view, that you would see these. Now, this might be just one particular ripple that is just constantly going out. Now, if I hit the other one, and this one's going to start to also ripple through, you notice that there's quite a bit of interaction now between the waves and they don't look okay as nice as they did before, but they do have a pattern. So they start matching this up. Now you can go on this, again, I'll put up in the description, okay, the actual link to this reference that I'm using here and you can play around with it. And you don't have to necessarily do it just with water taps. You can do it, okay, with sound, for example, as you can see here, so I'm gonna hit, okay, and then there's a, a basically a subwoofer, which is just going back and forth and creating these waves. And then you can create another one, okay, which goes in. And you can see this through the waves themselves, but you can also see it through the actual particles, or you can see them in both, which is really, really neat to be able to see all of the interactions that you have. So in interference that you have in between, the interactions are just two or more waves that are constantly going and interacting between each other. Now, the concept of superposition or the principle of superposition is very common actually in sciences. So it pops up in various aspects. So from electricity and magnetism, for example, with circuits, it pops up in mathematics as well, but it definitely pops up in waves. So if you have two or more of these waves, the superposition principle, what it tells us is that we can take and calculate the overall amplitude with regards to any wave, if they're going to be interacting within each other, by simply just taking the sum of all of the amplitudes. Now, here are just two waves. Now, these are very special waves. They're triangular-like. And I can just go about, okay, and go ahead and interact these two waves together. So you can imagine that this wave is moving in this direction and maybe this wave is moving in this direction. 
just as I had in the simulation itself where the two waves were just crossing between each other. And they were using this principle. So when you have this, and we're going to be assuming that as the waves are passing by, there is no necessarily loss of energies. Remember, wave is just the transfer of energy as you're moving along. And we're assuming that for the moment, let's imagine that these are still particles, okay, that are moving through. So if you have these, okay, and the waves are going to be colliding through and you want it to recreate. So if I wanted to take these two waves and say that, okay, well, you know, they're going to be moving along. And I'm going to just capture this at a particular point in time. So let's say that they were crossing over like this. So how would we, you know, take this and actually redraw a full item, okay, or a full wave with respect to the principle of superposition? So if you take this principle of superposition, what it tells us is that you can recreate this entire thing. So I'm going to redraw this, okay, this way. And what's going to happen is now, please remember, this is frozen in time. So the superposition principle tells us, all right, so right now we're going to have to sum up all of the waves. Now notice that for this portion up to right here, there's really nothing to sum up except the wave, which is in purple. So this would have been looking exactly the same. So that's what you would have seen right there. So that purple, which I'm going to redraw. So for that particular component, it would have been looking exactly identical. So that's what you would have had there. Now, the other component that you would have, so on this side, so this is the easiest thing to do. Of course, there is no superposition because there's still only one wave attached. So in that case, I can go back into the green and what I will notice is this is going to look exactly the same as you're going through. So this is how the wave looks like. However, now all of a sudden, okay, if you're going to be going up and you're gonna be noticing these two waves as they're crossing through, well, so right there, this is going to be causing quite a bit of a gap okay, in terms of superposition. So it's going to jump up on us quite a bit. So I'm going to move this down just so that I'm capable of actually capturing this entire thing. So notice that your green, so this is basically goes from here to here. Notice that it's one, two, and three squares right there, okay, plus an additional one right here. So this is four squares up. So this is going to be Okay, an amplitude of four. Now I'm assuming that it's just one unit per each individual square. I didn't put any units in here. Now at the same time, you are noticing that the purple one as well is actually going through. So this one is right here. So this goes one, two, and three. So that's the purple one in here. So this is, has an amplitude of three. So the superposition principle tells us that we're going to be adding these two together. So maybe I'll use blue. So you're gonna be adding these two amplitudes to, together, which is gonna give us seven. So instead of our actual wave, now what it will look like, it's going to jump. So it's gonna be one, two, three from the actual purple one, and then an additional four from the actual green one. So another, that's four, five, six, and seven. So it's going to skyrocket all the way up to here. That's where it's going to be. Now, as it's crossing through, so I'm going to also draw kind of the intersecting point in here. So what we have is if I now take, I'm gonna blow this up in here. So now notice that they're intersecting right there at this particular point. And both of them are one, two, three, and this is exactly at a half. So it's three and a half right there. Now, this is going to be both from the green and from the actual purple. So three and a half plus three and a half, again, is going to be seven. So what I'm going to see now within this point, so I'm going to draw this point in the middle. Okay, so this is what you will have. And of course, we would have, do, we would have done that for every single point, okay, as you're going through for all of these. But you don't necessarily always have to do that. So you can just pick kind of convenient points and more or less sketch to see what happens. If the waves are much more complicated, then it's not always that easy to be able to do that. As you saw, so in the actual simulation, okay, that I did right here. So notice that in this case, it's much, much harder. And this is actually combining and doing the superposition for us at the same time as the waves are passing through. 
and I can now also freeze this in time. So as it's going through, now I can freeze it. And look how the actual recreation of superposition looks like. Very ugly, right, as you're having through. Now, of course, I can keep playing it, okay? And it keeps changing depending where the waves are. Now, I can actually add up the other waves, okay, that we're actually combining in there. So those are the two waves that are passing each other by within here. Those are the combination, the superposition. One is down, one is up. Now, if I remove these, this is the actual superposition. It means the addition of the two, it's frozen in time. But as time goes on, of course, they are going to be passing by each other, okay, that you're doing right there. So that's what you would have in here. If I go back to this, we just have one instant in time where we're doing this. And of course, you as a student would most likely have this. You wouldn't necessarily recreate every single time as I've done in the simulation. So for you, you wanna be able to understand the concept of superposition. If you freeze something, if you take two waves, you overlap them, you can add and play with the amplitude to add it up. The addition is the superposition of one plus the other, which gives you the result. Now, we would do exactly the same thing with these two last points. This is gonna be the same. You can convince yourself. Again, it's three plus four. So my wave, what it looks like, basically looks something like this. So that's what I would have in here. So that's the actual superposition that I would have. And of course, okay, so within there, so as you're having, okay, so it would kind of jut down all the way through as you're passing this all the way up, okay, and then all the way up right there. So that's very interesting, right? That you would see something like this. Let me maybe move this up a little bit. It didn't go up as much. So right there, this is the superposition component. So as you're going from this picture to this picture, okay, or this graph to this graph, you have those two, and then they're going to be passing by each other. And as they kind of cross through, you're going to be noticing that you know this span kind of goes up and it gets bigger and bigger, okay, and you can continue on to do this. That is superposition. Again, it's the sum of all the amplitudes. Imagine you have three waves passing each other or four or five or 20 or 100 okay, or more. You would have to do this for all of them. Now, of course, in those situations, we might use other tools than just simply adding things up. But adding things up teaches you on what exactly the super superposition principle is all about when okay, there's interference between two particular waves or more. Now, the last component of this video is the concept that you should understand of constructive and destructive interferences, okay? Or what do they mean? Well, constructive means that you're going to be taking two waves and the constructive means that the amplitude add up each other, to each other. They do not actually cancel themselves off in any way. So this happens when the amplitudes okay, are both, for example, positive, and as they pass each other through, they construct, they construct, meaning the superposition is going to be now added together. This has happened right here. This would be constructive interference, where the two are added up together. And destructive interference means that when they are now subtracting because one is up and one is down, and therefore as they pass each other, they're going to start to cancel each other off. And that's something that you saw in that first simulation that I showed you. So in order to think about constructive and destructive, so within here, this would be destructive as you're going through, as these two waves are gonna slowly notice that they, the amplitudes have decreased, right? because they're destructive. Now, if you want them to be kind of constructive, so what I can do is I can change this back up, okay? And now all of a sudden this is constructive. So notice that it's growing, right, as they're passing. So they're constructing on top of each other. Now, one item that you might be aware of is for example, uh, canceling, right? So, or noise canceling within your headphones that you have. So if you think about that, is that constructive or is that destructive? How do you cancel the noise? Well, it has to be destructive because otherwise 
okay, those actual waves would not be able to pass through and you would be hearing all of the noise coming in. So your headphones actually project out kind of a cancellation of all the unwanted waves that are coming in so that you can listen either to your music, podcast, okay, maybe this video or something else. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.